Hello, officer. Hey, How you doing? Good, good, good. I, saw much of I called the number here on this sign, and the young lady said, the yeah, supervisor would be very happy to come out and talk to me. On Sunday, United States Senator Jeff Merkley, who saw there, went to an immigrant detention center in an old Walmart that's been decommissioned in Brownsville, Texas, to try to understand why the Trump administration is ripping immigrant children from their parents at the border. And here is what happened. Yes, hello there. Yes, this is U.S. Senator Jeff Merkley. And I'm, I'm, I'm here at the uh, Casa de Padres uh, facility for the children. I called, my team called last week to arrange for me to be able to come and visit this facility. Can you please give me a tour of it? A tour? Can I talk to the supervisor yeah, no, who is here? Because maybe they can explain to me. Well, maybe, that yes, would be well, you can get in contact. I can give you a, a way and give you the number, but you get the document. I don't really want the, the number because we call us. We I want to actually talk to the supervisor. There's no, right now, there's, if, if there's no information you guys can document. What, whatever individuals in charge would be great to come and, and share and, and talk with me. Well, greetings. Is your supervisor coming out? Um, Mr. Sanchez? Yes. yes, you're the supervisor. Yes. I want to introduce you to my team here. I'll, I'll be with you guys in just a Hello, officer. Hi, Hi, good. How are you doing? Good, good, good. I, saw much of, I called the number here on this sign, and the young lady said, the yeah, supervisor would be very happy to come out and talk to me. I haven't asked to leave the property, but I'm guessing that's about what's to happen. Yeah, sir, I think that's what they're going towards. What was your name again, sir? I'm sorry, Senator? Senator Jeff Merkley. Jeff? U.S. Senator Jeff Merkley. Merkley. Yes. How do you spell it? I don't want to misspell it. Yes. M E R. M E R. Yeah. M E R. M E R. K L E Y. K L E Y. Yeah. And your yeah. date of birth, sir? Yeah, it's October 24th. October 24th, 1956. 1956. And you said you, you were sent? I'm a U.S. senator. Okay, sir. Yes, and U.S. policy is involved right now with uh, children. Are you familiar with this policy? Ah, uh, no negative. Price. Actually, this is not something that we specifically deal with. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but it was just, just so I can ID it and, just go and advise my yeah. sergeant that you're here. We're here. Supervisor's here. If, if he wants to leave the property, he can ask. But he hasn't asked yet. Okay. Do you guys mind? I've now been asked to leave the property, and so I'll, I'll comply with that. And Senator Jeff Merkley, uh, Democrat of Oregon, joins me now from Washington, D.C. It's good to see you, uh, Senator. Yes, I, I want to just be clear on this. You, you reached out to DHS through your staff, through official channels, to arrange some sort of visit before going down there, correct? Well, I was seeking to get into three different uh, places. Uh, one is a processing center run by DHS, the Department of Homeland Security, and I was given permission to do that. The second was a respite center run by the Catholic Church, and I received permission for that. This third place is after DHS hands the children over to the Department of Health and Human Services, and it's run by the Office of Ref Refugee Relocation. Uh, and so this was, technically we reached out to that office to get into this facility, and they said no. And that facility, that is the, the, the blacked out windows. That's, a, that's an old Walmart with blacked out windows that has children, uh, both who come unaccompanied and also children who've been taken away from their parents who are then housed in that facility. Is that correct? That's my understanding. I wasn't able to get precise answers, but those who work with refugees there said that is the case, that there are roughly 1,000 children inside behind those doors and without adults. Now, you went to a facility in McAllen, right, and you got to see a, a kind of processing center. What did you see there? What did you witness? Well, the first room had a series of uh, cages that look a lot like dog kennels in which people had recently arrived and been put into them. They were very crowded. Uh, the individuals had space blankets, um, uh, so you had all these silver space blankets, uh, no mattresses. Uh, and uh, very, people looking very st distressed and upset, a number of women holding uh, children in their arms. And then adjacent to that is a very, very large warehouse with much larger cages. Uh, and in those, the children have already been separated away from the, the parents. There was one cage that had children who were, ch young boys who were being lined up for food, and they started with the smallest in front. So you had a little toddler, I don't know, he must have been four or five years old, uh, up through uh, youth that are 16 or 17. And they, you, some of those may have been unaccompanied. Others were undoubtedly taken away from their families for families that are, are seeking asylum. So these are families that are 
coming to the U.S., having gone through horrific circumstances abroad, having this vision of the Statue of Liberty and the fact that Americans, virtually all of us, have some member of our family tree at some point who came here escaping oppression, expecting that they finally made it to the shores of the U.S., and now they'll get a fair chance to present their case for asylum, and instead they go through a new trauma with their children ripped out of their arms, sent away to they have no idea where, no idea when, where they are going, no idea how to contact their children. It's, it's hugely uh, stressful for the parents, for sure. But think of the trauma to the children who, ha who know nothing about this new I land except the security of their parents, and they're torn away from them. I, I want to play for you. You know, the, the Trump administration has been a little coy about this is what, whether this is what they're doing or not. And their, their line is, we're, we have a zero tolerance policy. We prosecute everyone who crosses the border. Here's what uh, DHS Secretary Nielsen had to say in Arizona last week. I'd love to get you to respond to it. Take a listen. Okay. It appears our critics want a two-tier legal system. They think illegal aliens should get different, perhaps better treatment than U.S. citizens because they happen to be illegal aliens. No jail if they have a family. No critical consequences if they have children. I'm here today to tell you differently. If you smuggle illegal aliens across our border, we will prosecute you. If you cross the border illegally, we will prosecute you. And if you make a false immigration claim, we will prosecute you. The lawlessness has to end. What do you think of that? Well, Kirsten should be absolutely uh, ashamed of herself on, on this, because here you have families who are presenting themselves at the border, and they are saying, we are here, we've gone through these horrific circumstances, we are seeking asylum. We have already always treated such families not as illegals, but as people legitimately under international law seeking asylum. While well, the children have been kept with the parents, there's no reason not to keep them with the parents. They're going to go through an adjudication. If they are judged that they have enough documentation that they meet the standard, they'll be granted asylum. And if, if they don't, they'll be returned to their host, host country. But we never treat them by inflicting a new cruel a tragedy on the children by ripping them out of their parents' arms. It's, that's just the new unacceptable policy. The administration is trying to change the topic in every possible way. Uh, but on this, they have no moral standing to, to, to tear these children away from their parents who are seeking asylum. All right, Senator Jeff Merkley, thank you. Thank you. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.